It's time to talk about MDB's Yu-Gi-Oh! is not fun anymore video. Also, he did mention at the end that this was all a ploy, I guess, to push some sort of series of his. So I don't know if he was just joking this whole video, but regardless, it does bring up an interesting discussion point. And also, I'm not hating on the guy. I like MDB. He actually looks a lot like Simo. So y'all may want to take a paternity test to see if y'all brothers. All jokes aside, uh, yeah, I don't have any hate towards MDB. I'm just more discussing some of his points because I did pretty much agree with everything he said, but there was a couple points that I want to uh, kind of discuss and debate also, I'm partially drunk, so yeah, keep that in mind in case I'm jumping around in this video. Let's dive on into it, shall we? We so hard. Destroy the ever-living boo-boo brown stain. Off of that subscribe button, you better not be doing that on yourself. As we climb even further beyond the subscriber ladder, we're at over 1,200 subscribers, ladies and gentlemen. 1,217 subscribers. I'm so grateful, and I'm so appreciative for it, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. I don't care how long you've been subbed. I really do appreciate all the support. It really just, it makes my heart melt. I never thought I would get this far, so I hope you're having a fantastic day. And uh, I hope that anything that's gone bad, you don't let it ruin the rest of your day. Because you know what? All the people that are bothering you are just a bunch of jerks and bitches who are angry because you are successful. So don't let them leave a boo-boo stain on your day. So <laughs> let's talk about MDB's video. So MDB Yu-Gi-Oh! posted probably about eight days now at the time of me recording this video that he is not having as much fun in Yu-Gi-Oh! as of late. And there was a lot of things that he talked about. I was tempted to take clips from his video and put them in here, but I feel like it's just going to be easier if I discuss the video as a whole. I'm going to leave a link to his video down in the description. Um, this He did post the video before we got our latest ban list uh, that banned Super Heavy Samurai Link Monster, but Delicious Memory to One and all that. But regardless, what he's saying, it can still be applied to today. And... There was a lot in that video that I agreed with, and I highly recommend that you go and watch it. But MDB, there was also some things in the video that you said that I don't wholeheartedly agree with. And again, he did say at the very end that it was all a ploy or a joke to push some sort of series. But I am taking this video as this is genuinely what he meant. I don't watch his content often, so I don't know if like, he was just joking or if he was dead serious. I'm just going to assume that he was serious and go from there under that uh, perspective, right? So one of the things that he said is that Yu-Gi-Oh has, and I'm kind of paraphrasing, not exactly word for word, but that Yu-Gi-Oh is a build my board game and that a lot of games don't go past, I think he said like turn three and that he could count on one hand where games have gone to like say turn 15. Keep in mind that he has the uh, series of like uh, the history of Yu-Gi-Oh that he does with Simo on a regular basis. And so because of that, He's been able to experience a lot of different formats where formats have been slower or like tier zero Zodiac format, things like that, to where when you experience those different formats, and I said this as a comment on his channel, you know, this is why I make the Yu-Gi-Oh! Retrospective series. Because for me, for someone who's been playing the game since 2008, two, I went to my first ever locals two weeks before they changed the fusion deck name to the extra deck. And then we got the synchro monsters. Yu-Gi-Oh! has changed a lot, ladies and gentlemen, and do I miss the days of like even Edison format or Teledad format? Yeah, I do. You know, if you remember my video where I said the Yu-Gi-Oh! nostalgia is hitting me hard, I was in a really shitty radio job. I was getting abused and used and treated like shit, and then I finally got out of it, but yet the nostalgia was hitting me hard, and I was genuinely depressed. I missed the old days of you know, summoning a quick draw synchron and discarding a monster or even like playing Burial Dad, which for those of you who are newer to the channel, Burial Dad was a deck that was essentially like a dark arm zombie deck. It's really what it was, uh, but it played three Necrogardna and three Burial from the different dimensions. So the opponent tried to attack, you could banish a Necrogardna, activate the Burial from the different dimension, put the Necrogardna back in the grave, negate more attacks. You could summon Caius. You can make things like Brionic. It was a super fun deck that believe it or not, I got the build from my dad, of all people who plays like Chainburn his whole life, because he was playing the World Championship game, I think it was like 2010, and he got the build from that game because he played someone online, so he went back and played the ghost because you could save like ghosts in that game and play against the deck that they beat you with, and he learned the deck by using cards that would let you see the deck and all that. 
And he played me with that. I was like, yo, this is cool. And I played that deck for like six, seven months until they finally hit Barrel from the Different Dimension of One. It was, it's still, to this day, one of my favorite decks of all time. One of my favorite formats of all time. That was September 2009. I say all this because I do miss the nostalgia of Yu-Gi-Oh!, but the thing is, is that Yu-Gi-Oh! has been a build my board game, I would argue, since 2013 format with Dragon Rulers. And this is why when I made the Yu-Gi-Oh! retrospective on Dragon Ruler format, specifically in 2013, that that format truly changed Yu-Gi-Oh! forever, for years to come. You know, we just saw Blaster come off of the ban list to one, and... Some people would say, oh, like Duelist Alliance changed Yu-Gi-Oh! forever. But I would argue that even when Duelist Alliance came out, you still kind of had a bit of a chess format-esque, so to speak, where the game wasn't just over by turn three, like we see now. Like, if games go past turn three, it's probably because one of those two players is playing Eldritch. Like, I'm just being honest. And there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. You know, something that our uh, friend Valley D uh, shout out to you, bro. Um, said one time when I was trying to record a podcast episode, then the audio was shit. But besides the point, one of the things that he said in this particular clip was that Yu-Gi-Oh has turned into, instead of a chess type of game, to being a, I'm going to build up my castle walls. Can you break through my defenses? And, you know, that's why a lot of people call decks like helmet decks. Like, for example, a lot of people say Eldritch is like a helmet deck. You strap on your helmet, you have a bunch of floodgates, Eldritch is a golden lord, your main go-to monster, and you're good to go. Bujin, back in the day, when Vanity's Emptiness was legal. You'd summon out Bujin Yamato, it'd get you a search every turn, you sit on Vanity's Emptiness, you strap your helmet on, and, like, you just try to win the ball game. It was, it was a big control deck, similar to, like, Sky Striker. And... I would argue, again, that Yu-Gi-Oh! has just been a build-my-board game since Dragon Ball format, and a lot of people like that. Not everybody does. And that's why, like, you've sort of seen, I guess for lack of a better term, new-age Yu-Gi-Oh! players go back to formats like Edison because that's more kind of what they're used to compared to GOAT format. Um, and I can... I can see both sides of that where like Edison and Goat are respected in their own ways. Edison is a slower format, similar to something like Goat, but at least in Edison you have synchro monsters. But one of the other things that MDB said, and I know I'm sort of jumping around, but there was a lot of stuff to discuss in his video. One of the things that MDB said was that he really liked tier element tier zero format. And his reasoning for that was because even if your opponent drew what he called quote unquote the out, they couldn't necessarily beat you just because they drew the out because tier element tier zero format just now two formats ago was that good. But the issue with that MDB and like I commented on your video was that tier element was such a good fucking deck that even if you drew quote unquote the out, whether it was sphere mode, lava golem, whatever, they could just play like a flunder deck and rebuild their board on your fucking turn. And tier zero formats are both a bad thing and a good thing in Yu-Gi-Oh. They're bad in the sense that if you're not playing, in this case, tier, you're probably losing the moment you sit down at the fucking table. But they're also good in the sense that, one, people will build rogue decks, like whether it's stun or what the fuck ever, flunder, you name it, sprite, to beat that main tier zero deck. But it's also good in the sense that once a ban list comes, Konami knows what cards they need to hit, and it fixes the game as a whole. Tier element, tier zero format was disgusting because of like many other tier zero formats. Tier element, no matter how many outs you drew, arguably, they could still play through it. And that's what made the deck so bullshit. It had so many bases that it could cover that it didn't care if it got kaiju It didn't care if it got sphere moded. I understand MDB where you like the format because if the opponent draws the out, you don't automatically lose. Let's say you're playing purely, right? And you know, you drop out and at purely noir, let's say you had the six draw combo. So you drew three cards off of your plump from the three sleeping memories. You use purely leap, you bring out noir, you draw three more cards, you drew six cards doesn't matter how many cards you draw, assuming that you don't draw any hand traps. If the opponent Santa Claus or Kaiju's your noir, you're probably losing the fucking ball game because on the crackback, they're going to be able to build their own board. They're going to be able to, as we used to say on the channel a long time ago, drop a dookie on the board and proceed to play with themselves. And they're just going to whoop your ass. So I understand from that perspective, MDB, where 
if you're playing something like tier zero tier element, that if the opponent draws the out, they don't automatically win. But that's the reason I would argue why cards like the Kaijus were created, why hand traps were created. You know, if you remember back when I started posting, I had originally started posting daily on YouTube again. One of the first videos that I made probably like a year ago at this point was where I talked about if Ash Blossom needed to be hit. And I had made a video about Ash Blossom some time ago. Uh, around when it first came out, like, didn't need to be hit. And everybody was like, Avery, you're an idiot. The card's good, but it doesn't need to be hit. And I believe for a time we saw Ash Blossom at two in the OCG. And I made the argument probably about a year ago where I said, look, hand traps are really getting out of hand because you had all these different options for fucking hand traps. I always think back to this super heavy samurai build I saw like a month ago where uh, there was 19 fucking hand traps in this super heavy samurai deck. And I'm like, this is bullshit. Like, even if Super Heavy Samurai can only establish a Baron and, like, the other four cards in their hand, like, let's say they did a one-card combo, the other four cards in their hand are hand traps, like, you just lose because they have so much negation. So the fact that Gamma went to one was great, besides the fact that it could turn into an Excel Synchro and then turn into a Baron and whatever, you know, that was obviously broken. But the fact that Gamma has been reeled in at one, it makes me wonder if they'll hit other hand traps in the future. Obviously, hand traps are good because it gives the player who went second a chance to actually play the game. But that is something to keep in mind that in a sense, Yu-Gi-Oh! you could argue is still a sort of game of chess like it was back in GOAT format and Edison format, I would argue to a lesser extent, that you have the hand traps to help you from those boards being created where you just can't play. You know, when you look back at formats like March 2012, when you had windups and insectors at full power and Shockmaster was at fucking three, yeah, I played that format. That format was bullshit. And you had these decks like windups that can loop your hand for five, six, because you got to draw six if you went first, six cards if you opened up Pot of Avarice. Uh, windups couldn't do that now in 2023, even with Zim Mighty at three, because you have so many hand traps. Even without Max C, you have to worry about cards like Valor, Imperm, Ash, what have you, that could stop you from looping those cards. That's why a lot of people, myself included, want to see Zim Mighty come back to three, because I feel like windups really wouldn't be all that broken. And so for all of the knowledge that you have MDB, I'm not saying that you're a fool. I'm not saying that I'm hating on you and all that. I'm, this is just a reply video or a response video, whatever it is you want to call it. But Yu-Gi-Oh! has been in this break my board scenario for years. Would I love to see it go back to a form of, hey, it's more of a game of chess, similar to like what hat format was? Sure. Yeah. Because at least in hat format, you had the option of playing a control deck like hat or gear gear, or you could say, I'm going to drop a dookie on the board and play Dragon Ruler's 2014 version, and you could still have fun. You also had Infernity with Lava Will Chain. It was a combo deck, and it was fun. You didn't have all the hand traps back then like you have now. And so it really makes me wonder, could we see old combo decks or control decks of the past come back, and we could still have a diverse format to where it doesn't feel like a break my board scenario? And... It's a shame that Konami has gone down the route of it's going to be a break my board scenario, but that's the game that we're in. And MDB, I encourage you to not let the old formats of the past give you rose tinted glasses and think, I want Yu-Gi-Oh to go back to this kind of game. Because remember, you got to think hindsight being 2020, you look at these older formats where it's like, oh, it was control based. Yeah, but we didn't have fucking hand traps. We didn't have the Kaijus. We didn't have Santa Claus. We didn't have Nibiru. We didn't have Dark Ruler. We didn't have all these things that I feel like a lot of people can make the argument of it helps the format as a whole. Now, does this mean that Yu-Gi-Oh! is perfect in 2023? No. I do feel that Kara, or not Kara Curry, I do feel that Kashtira should have been hit harder. Um, but if this is the route that Konami wants to go down, at least we have the tools that we can use to at least hinder the opponent to some degree to where we at least stand a chance. You know, whether it be hand traps, Dark Ruler, Nibiru, what have you. You know, if Nibiru was around back in fucking 2013 Dragon Ruler format, I would argue Dragon Ruler wouldn't have been a tier zero deck. Some people say Spellbook was tier zero, but really it was, you either played Spellbook or Dragon Ruler, nothing at all. And Dragon Ruler was honestly the much better deck overall, but that's semantics at that fucking point. So... Again, I'm not hating on MDB. This is just a response video. People like to hate on fucking videos whenever you do a response. Like, oh, you're hating on this person. No, I think MDB is a cool dude. I don't have no hate for anybody in the community. 
So, you know, try to relax your anus and your shoulders as your boy is, as we drink some, uh, honestly, some vodka and Sprite. This shit's fire. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you again so much for the support. I love this game. I'm always going to love this game. This game has helped me through thick and thin, and I, I don't ever see myself quitting it anytime soon. Even if I don't buy decks and spend 500 plus dollars on them, and yes, I've lost my ass on decks in the past. Zodiac, I always think back to, I lost $700 on that fucking deck. And I'm, I'm going to love this game no matter what, even if Delicious Memory goes to one. And at the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's about learning life skills from this game that you'd be surprised. You can learn a lot from playing competitive light. You can learn life skills from this game. And yes, Yu-Gi-Oh is not what it's meant to be, but I would argue, and this is what I want to end it on, I would argue that if Yu-Gi-Oh stayed the same as it was back in GOAT format in 2005, the game would have died a long time ago because it's the same fucking song and dance, but with different colored pom-poms over and over again. And I think that that's what keeps Yu-Gi-Oh really creative. And, you know, again, it's a fun game if you just give it a chance. If you find that deck that you really enjoy. Yeah, it may not be super competitive, but for me, Yu-Gi-Oh! is always fun because I think back to that hotel I was in in Miami when my mom was still in school. And my dad and I just happened to come across Yu-Gi-Oh! on cable TV. And we watched it. We fell in love with it. And my dad and I have been able to bond years over years because of this game. Yeah, sure, he plays shitty burn decks and I play meta decks. But we've been able to bond over that. And I think at the end of the day, that's really what Yu-Gi-Oh! is about. Bar none the format. It's about making friends, learning life skills, learning how to handle stressful situations. You know, especially when you've got that 30 seconds left on the clock. How is it that you're going to be the best competitive person you can be? And just having fun. So... Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. MDB, I thought your video was great. I just wanted to make a response to this. Hopefully, I made sense in this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments, what you think. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.